Yeah, sure, let's go with that. Hey, I'm Backwards Hat Jeremy, making another engraving video. So a lot of people want to know uh, what they need to start hand engraving, and it can be a little overwhelming sometimes because there's a lot of stuff uh, that you could, you know, start doing, start getting, start buying, stuff like that. So I'm just going to go over, uh, in my opinion, what I think is the best basics for you to get to start hand engraving for not that much money, because some stuff can cost a lot of money and you don't need to get very expensive stuff uh, to do really cool stuff with engraving. First thing that I'm going to talk about is the hammer. Uh, this is a chasing hammer. Chasing hammers are great for engraving because they're not too heavy. If you had a really heavy hammer, it would be hard to control uh, the soft, subtle hits you have to do for engraving. And if it were too light, you'd have to swing a lot harder to get a decent hit. So these work great for engraving. This is what everybody uses. And you can get them on Contenti. And I use Contenti all the time. You can get all kinds of stuff from them, not just for engraving. Uh, this basically like a candy store for me because everything on here is like oh yeah I could do something with that but for today we're just going to be doing engraving tools so let's go to engraving tools I'm talking about hammers so let's go to chasing hammers and they have more expensive ones but you don't need to do, you don't need to get one of these if you're just starting out the economy chasing hammer is your best bet and I would just go with a one inch one they have other diameter hammers. The one I use is an inch wide and I've never felt that it needed to be any wider. So a one inch diameter chasing hammer uh, is the way to go. All right, so you got your hammer done. You got, uh, got your hammer out of the way. Next thing you need is the little chisel for actually doing the engraving. And there are a lot of options with this. I mean, if you were if you were trying to figure out which one to buy and you were looking on Contenti, trying to figure out which one, I mean, it's overwhelming, uh, all the different options of gravers. In my opinion, I would suggest starting off with a high-speed steel one. This is high-speed steel. Uh, the one that I upgraded to later is uh, tungsten carbide. I wouldn't mess with tungsten carbide right off the start and the reason is that you have to do something called setting a heel on it, which I'm not going to talk too much about setting the heel in this video. This isn't a tutorial video, this is more just like a shopping list. Uh, it's a lot easier to fix your mistakes on high speed steel because it's softer. It doesn't last as long, you have to sharpen it more often, but if you make a mistake it's easier to fix. You can buy these off of Contenti. So go to engraving tools, gravers and handles. You also need a handle, I'll talk about that after uh, the graver. So carbide steel gravers are great for whenever you're wanting to upgrade, but for now, like I said, high speed steel is the way to go. Don't even mess with carbon steel. And this is what I mean, you have all of these different things to look at. I would recommend the GRS Glen Steel High Speed Steel RFF Point Gravers. Really rolls off the tongue, don't it? And Again, lots of options. They both have their advantages. 90 makes a bit deeper of a line. 120 makes a bit wider of a line. 105 is a good middle ground. So I would go with that. And then you're gonna need a handle to put it in. And we'll go to Graver Handles. And these are super cheap, super convenient. Uh, I would recommend going with something like this. I know they look all kind of funny but I would recommend going with something without this little ball shape on there. The reason is, since it's smaller, it doesn't have that little ball thing in the way. If I'm leaning it down to engrave on something and I'm trying to do, let's say, some fine shading and I have to lower my hand for that, I don't have that ball getting in my way. I can lower this right down to the table and get a super shallow angle if I had to. Whereas if that ball were in the way, it would lift it up. And they do make these with a cutout in them for this exact reason, but I still find that these are awkward to hold on to. So I would recommend going with one of these. They're easy to hold on to, they're plenty long if your hand is big, um, and they won't get in the way of doing shallower cuts. So that takes care of your hammer and your graver now. Whenever you buy your gravers, they won't come with a heel on them, you have to set that yourself. I'll make a separate video for that because it Setting the, setting the heel geometry and sharpening your gravers de, uh, deserves its own video. So now you're going to want uh, something to engrave on. And carbon steel, A36 is the technical term for it. Low carbon steel is the best. Don't 
messed with stainless steel, it's way too hard. Copper is okay, it's a little soft and can be a bit tricky. Um, it's really easy to dig into copper, so I would just mess with steel. As you can see on my first practice plate, a lot of practicing. And this stuff is pretty cheap to get. I work in a metal fabrication shop, so scrap steel was super easy to come by. If you don't have easy access to scrap steel, uh, you have a couple options. If there is a fabric metal fabricating company in your area, they may be able to just sell you some scrap pieces of metal, cut you some small pieces of metal. If you want to buy some online, Brownells sells these practice plates. They are an eighth inch thick, which is what I use, which is good because it keeps it from flexing too much. And they're three inches wide by seven inches long, so you have plenty of metal to practice on for $13. Like you'll, if you burn through all of these while you're practicing, like you're gonna be pretty decent by the time you fill up all of these practice plates. Okay, so we got our piece of metal and our tools. Now we need something to hold on to the piece of metal. And a bench vise is the way to go. Amazon, Home Depot, Northern Tool, Tractor Supply. You just want to make sure that the one that you get has a big enough jaw opening. So this one has a four inch jaw opening, which is good because you can hold anything up to four inches wide. And this is useful, especially because the practice plates that I showed you were three inches wide. All right, so we got a vise. I don't have one of those vices. I actually had this huge machinist vise sitting around that I ended up using. And you can still see little bits of engraving uh, shavings all on the inside of it. This was way too overkill for what I was doing. Uh, since it was so heavy, I ended up I ended up buying this little turntable off Amazon so that I could set this very heavy vise on there and then I could spin it around with relative ease. All right, I mentioned earlier you're going to want to sharpen your gravers because they don't they come with a 45 degree face already sharpened onto them, but they don't come with the heel. Uh, and eventually you're going to have to sharpen the face of it anyway. These are by far the best way that I have found for sharpening. I had this little whetstone that I bought from Ace Hardware and it worked fine in the beginning until I upgraded to tungsten carbide gravers and then it didn't do so great of a job so I could have saved myself the trouble and just bought these in the beginning. These work great for high speed steel or tungsten carbide. Uh, they're Easy Lap Diamond Hone and Stone. And you can get these off Amazon. These are great. These cost about as much as my really cheap whetstone did. I'll cover sharpening and heel geometry in a later video, just because it does take uh, quite a bit to explain. Pretty much everything you need to start uh, hand engraving. It's not an incredibly complicated uh, process. You just want to make sure you have the right tools to do the job properly. Some things that are uh, you don't actually I wouldn't say you need them, but they will make your life a lot easier. One of these magnifier headsets is great because it allows you to, uh, well, see smaller things, which engraving is naturally uh, very small. So, again, you can get this one off of Contenti. Who would have thought? If we go to magnifiers and lighting and head mount magnifiers. You'll see this one. I actually got mine off of Amazon, but it's the exact same one as this. Uh, same little magnification lens and pin setup. I really like this one because it has a tightener in the back so you can easily adjust how tight or loose you want it to be. And it also has four different magnification lens, which is great. I prefer to use the two times lens, but give them all a try and see which one you like. It'll make engraving a lot more comfortable because you won't have to squint or focus on what you're doing. I think that's it, really. Backwards hat, Jeremy, activate. So once you get all this stuff, I mean, you're ready to engrave. And I'll make some uh, tutorial videos in the future on how to use all this stuff. I didn't want to go through it in this video. This video is just going to be for uh, shopping purposes. And, uh...